Hi, I'm Frances Proctor, otherwise known as Angel Eyes Online. In response to a recent thread on TalkGraphics.com, I came up with this method of making a chrome nameplate like you would see on a vintage car. So here is how I did it. I've got my text here. I've just started with a nice retro looking font. The font I'm using for this demonstration is called Gilly's Gothic Extra Bold, but any any vintage font would do for this. And I've got my text set at 32 points. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is to make an extra copy. So I've got two copies, one on top of the other. So I'm going to hit Control K on my keyboard to clone it. And I will just expand my page and layer gallery here so you can see I've now got two text areas one on top of the other and I'm going to click here and I'm going to hide the first one and I'm going to start working on the bottom one so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give this about a 60 percent black or 60 percent gray whichever you prefer color to it and we're going to give it a bevel I'm going to give it a rounded frame to bevel and I'm going to just reduce the size of this bevel down this default bevel down a bit that was too much you want it to look just something kind of like this and now I'm going to adjust the light angle all the way up just like this just so that we've got more of a highlight down here on the bottom than we do on the top and you've got this nice rounded bevel look to it and that's about it with the bevel tool so now to get a nice metallic look on this I'm going to go to the live effects tool new and I'm going to use the bump map filter that is down here under stylization. This is one of the filters that comes with Zara as a part of Zara. And I'm going to pull this over here so you can see. And I'm just going to experiment a little with the settings. I'm going to pull this up more to the top. I'm going to expand the width of the beam all the way over and then I'm going to drop the height down so that you get almost a gradient look to it and you want to keep this as metallic and I'm going to bump up the intensity and the unevenness and this is where you get your nice metallic look you can experiment with this a little bit with adjusting the unevenness and the intensity the more unevenness you put the uh, less intensity you may want or you could actually bump up that intensity a bit more for more of a, a darker look to your your metal I'm going to back this off some and bring the unevenness up a bit more Like I said, you can kind of play around with this to get to get the look you want. And you can adjust the light source here from left to right. And, bring that. and you can see All right, I'm going to leave it like this for now. Now, one of the important things about doing this is you want to have your resolution set at a fairly high DPI. You can see up here, I've got mine set at 300 DPI, 
you can set it here in this this box or you can go to the setup button here okay it's not going to work oh yep there it comes it's just slow because I'm recording and down here you can see where I've got my resolutions defaults set for my default resolution it's, it automatically goes to 300 dpi and I've done the same thing if I've got a lock up an effect so now that we've got this looking more like a nice chrome look to it I'm going to go back here to the page and layer gallery and I'm going to unhide the text area and I'm going to make sure my text area is selected and I'm going to bring up the color editor and we'll just slide this over so you can see more of this and we're going to set this I'm going to pull this into into the yellow zone a bit and we're going to set this at a nice kind of a creamy off-white color this kind of helps with that retro look I think and now we're going to make this look like a retro paint job first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add, introduce a little bit of noise into this so I'm going to go back to my live effects click new and back down to the stylization filter, filters oh wait a minute wrong place sorry to the distortion filters and we're going to add the noise so let's bump up the density of this noise all the way up and I'm going to take the strength down around 19 or 20 somewhere thereabouts and now we'll go back to the stylization filters and this time I'm going to use the embossing filter and again we'll play around with the embossing filters you can either click and drag this little arrow or set a direction in here I'm going to put this at about 315, 315 degrees and we're going to bump up the shininess and let's give it a, a high reflection too now you can experiment with the smoothing filter and the depth filter you can see what happens when you give it more depth it makes it bumpier drop the depth down the smoothing filter brings out more detail let's smooth it out a bit more and bring this depth up all right that to me looks like it's got a nice look to it so I'm gonna save it just click the X to dismiss that now that's pretty much most of our effect here I'm just going to go back to my selector tool here and I'm gonna select the whole thing and I'm going to give it a group it and just give it a wall shadow with the shadow tool and the shadow as you can see helps bring up that metallic look and you can see this time I haven't got quite the shine that I did before but you could definitely go back into the, uh, the bump map filter and play around with that but that's how I did it and I hope this is helpful